This is the Yogs cast, uh, the Yog Pod Spooktacular. I don't really like no, we spooky, can't call it, it Spooktacular. It's Red Bar call their Spectacular. Halloween show that. The Spectacular. That's more like it. This is the Yog Pod Spectacular. <laughs> Uh, yes. That's a door opening. <laughs> <laughs> sounded like you were standing on a rat. <laughs> That's uh, thunder. Okay, yeah, I got that. That was quite good. Um, Did you, you like that? Yeah, oh, that was quite nice. good. Thank you. So have you ever like dressed up as anything for Halloween or anything? Um... I dressed up as Marilyn Monroe one year. Okay. Yeah, but as she is now. So I was like a zombie Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> I was all decayed. I think horrible. it would be scarier if you were dressed up as like how she was before in like a, a puffy white dress that was like blowing up in the wind and big red lips. The thing is, I mean, I'm I'm quite a quite a big guy. Let's be honest. So when I dress up as someone, I'm dressed up as a fat version of them. <laughs> so one year, <laughs> one that. year I dressed up as the guy from Scream, right? The murderer from Scream. So I was wearing the, you know, the mask, yeah, that Scream yeah. mask, the monk thing. And I had the cowl, the black cowl and the black cloak. And unfortunately, my belly was just, you know, poking out. So I was just like a fat version of the guy from fucking Scream. Do you have to announce that? Like another that? year. Like when another you're, year, when like you're a group telling of us. people what costume you're going to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, what are you coming as? <laughs> oh, I'm coming as a fat version of Einstein or something. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, it's terrible. I'm coming though. as a fat teenage mutant ninja turtle. Exactly. Hello, and welcome to TTT. If you fart and it smells really bad, you might be able to spare those around you by smelling it all up first. The smell is consisted of tiny particles, and when you smell it, the particles go up your nose and are no longer floating around. Right. You smell up all the particles, and voila, no more stinky fart. <laughs> Thank you, Emmett. Emmett Nervend of somethingawful.com. It's the Yogg's cast tip of the day. Yog pod. Yog pod. This is the Yog pod. What? Hello, you're listening to the Yog pod. Hello, I'm Lewis, and with me is Simon. Hi, uh, I'm Simon. What? <laughs> Hello, I am Lewis. Okay. Uh, so, are there any other bullshit things that people are supposed to somehow believe? Fossils that are buried. They've been put there by Jesus to stop people from realising that the earth is young. So they find the fossils and they're like, oh look, a dinosaur. And look, it's millions of years old. So it, I'm not sure why God would do that though. Why would God want to confuse people? Why would he plant fake evidence to cover up the truth? Because surely he'd want people to know that the Earth is only, what, 6,000 years old? I think people were saying it is. You know, people in general. You bump into them on the street. How old is the Earth? Oh, 6,000 years old! I, d I, I mean, I don't see really? why God has a problem with this. I mean, God's like a celestial being. Why do Christians always say, oh, well, you know, he created it in seven days, therefore... You know, that was when Adam and Eve came and then, like, the flood and blah, blah, blah. Six. Why do they... Six days. Why do they Why do they six. complain? You created you the know, world in six days. Why can't the world be millions of years six. old? Because the Bible says that it isn't. I mean, the Bible itself, it states, like, all the generations of people who were born, you know, X begat Y begat Z. And so if you add it all up, 
you know, for each generation, it's only a few thousand years, and then suddenly we're up to New Testament. Oh, I see. What? So it's got a full history of everyone who existed before, going all the way up to Adam and Eve. Well, it. Uh, I think it includes the, the people who descended from Adam. Right. It lists all of their descendants up to like Moses or whatever in the Old Testament, or, or Noah. Not or whoever. Moses. It says Noah, and then you find Moses. out that that Moses is from you know a descendant of Noah. Noah. As are you know everybody, everybody is a descendant of Noah because he was the only person along with his wife and his three sons, who survived. Which meant that he, his sons and his wife had to repopulate the world amongst themselves. And that's a bit fucked up when you think about it, isn't it? I mean, you think Adam and, Adam and Eve, just the two of them starting life over is horribly incestuous after like a couple of generations, but they had to do it all over again with Noah. Yeah, but look, how... How did a life start then? How did the first man come to be? Um, he was made of clay um, that God kind of breathed life into. No, I mean in evolutionary terms. No, that is what happened, Lewis. Oh. Well, no. God took a pile of clay. He made like a morph type person from Tony Hart. The little morph fella. You remember him? Right, yeah. The Luke googly eyes and he was made out of plasticine yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well they made a little like wallace yeah. from wallace and gromit right okay so they you're made, saying that they made a little that wallace God created wallace and then a female version pretty of wallace. much yeah oh no the yeah fem- the female was he made be, from um, the male's rib or something wasn't she or something yeah because he needed some clay for some reason it was easier to take clay from adam rather than just take you know clay that was lying around in the dirt so he broke off the rib and he formed a woman from just that one rib I mean you may think that's a bit unlikely but then you know he's God he can do that he's like a magician yeah 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 it's like Paul Daniels <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, going back to like actual evolution though I can understand how he I mean I really should know the answer to this but it's kind of a question that's been bugging me, and it's probably quite a simple answer. So if someone knows the answer, write in. But, like, when man evolved, okay, it's obviously to do with mutation, isn't it? So whatever the species was that was around before us, like Homo erectus or whatever, one they obviously had a like, mutated baby that was a human, right? Wow. Is that right? And so <laughs> that was, like, one human. So you, th- Is so that you right? think... That evolution it... works is that two like cavemen, Neanderthals, were were at it one day, and then nine months later, like a a perfectly normal modern day human baby was born from them. Yeah, basically, is that not right? Well, I mean, you think back. I mean, how did the cavemen come into being? You know, obviously, two chimpanzees were at it. And then one day they gave birth to like a troglodyte. No, no, no. It's very, 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 very gradual though. I mean, there are literally hundreds of steps. (laughs) Literally hundreds Um, of steps. And so... (laughs) Over the millions of years. (laughs) Literally hundreds (laughs) of steps. (laughs) Yeah, but... No, but mankind hasn't been around that long as a species. About a million Um, years. It's complicated. It's very, very complicated. I mean, I'm trying... You don't know either, do you? I'm asking you as if you know, because you're, like, old and wise, but you don't have any idea, do you? Okay, well, think of a balloon, right? You've got a balloon, and it's not blown up. It's like a floppy little balloon. And then you blow it up, and you've got, like, a full-sized filled balloon. It's not as though one day there were two flat, uninflated balloons that fucked, and then nine months later, a fully inflated (laughs) balloon was born... (laughs) It's like gradually that balloon is inflated. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on or what? Or think you're blowing up a balloon, right? You I blow don't up a balloon. A There's all. a process from sorry, where it goes from sorry, uninflated sorry, to inflated. Sorry, stop, stop, okay? stop. So stop. that process, it doesn't just transition from uninflated to inflated. There's like a process in which it slowly inflates. 
you're kind of seeing it as though it's it's like going from one to two. It's not like a transition from something to something completely different. No, it's not like two two monkeys had sex and produced a human baby. It's, it's not like, like two monkeys had sex and produced a slightly different monkey, which produced a slightly no. different monkey, 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 monkey for ages, and then human, or whatever. Yeah. But the the previous monkey was basically a human. Now, what is this yeah. balloon analogy? It's shown that you that there's a process, a very long, complex process, going from one state to another state, and that it doesn't just automatically, immediately go from uninflated to inflated. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I mean, if you were to, like, break I it think down, you're, you know, you're... to half inflated, a quarter inflated, an eighth inflated, there's, like, no way that you Are can, you saying like... that, like, the previous species to us, so say, I'm not sure who it was, I think it was Homo erectus who were before That's it. just a name um... put on something that Are is you... human-like, which we clearly did evolve from. It's not as though one day two hum- Homo erectuses fucked and then nine months later a, a human, modern human, was born. It's just that is an example, one example of, you know, a state of evolutionary, you know, process of humans that has just been found. So you found a few of them from all this same, you know, roughly the same time period. And because they're like us, but they are different, they've put a name on it. They're still kind of humans, it's just that they're an older version of humans. Um, I mean, it's kind of difficult to tell, you know, when does one species become a next one, or the previous one? So what you're saying is that basically the entire tribe, I guess, of, of people had a collective mutation between them, and those mutations persisted until the entire tribe evolved into Homo sapiens. Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Someone write in and tell me, because I want to know. Uh, and I'm fucking stupid. But, here we are. Um... You're listening to the Yogpod Halloween. People wrote in some Halloween stories, by the way. Oh my God, did they? Oh, this is this is good. This is good. Uh, well, there are not that many. Um, there's one, isn't there? <laughs> there's there's one. one. Yeah, the Brilliant. rest of them are just weird, weird. There's this one guy writes, "The kettle presses against my Bible before the sober species." Um, I don't know what that means. That sounds quite deep. This month's 14 times of unusual weird news and strange phenomena, right? It asks this month, mermaids, myth or reality? Okay. Uh, Myth. Myth. (laughs) Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's covered that. I don't understand the, the attraction of a mermaid, because surely they don't have a vagina. Am I being stupid here? They do, it's just a fish one. Right, okay. Uh, do fish have vaginas? Um, yeah, but they're a bit scaly and silvery. Well, I, I don't sort of get it. I mean, it's, it can't be nice, mermaids. Like, I don't see why there's all this big deal about them. Well, when you've been at sea, you've been at sea for months on end... They probably seem pretty attractive to you. They got lovely tits and beautiful faces and long hair. So you know. Yeah, I suppose if you've been at sea for you like just keep it above ages, the belt. You just want to have you know a dream is that some woman would climb out of the sea. I suppose that would be like a dream of yours. So what's this story that you have? Okay, it's quite short. Predictably, um, it says this is guy. This is from Eric Frost. Okay. Shall I get some scary music on? Yep. Mm. While I was home alone, I heard some funny noises coming from the basement. 
I was around 12 years old. So I decided to go down and have a look. As I walked down the stairs, a cold wind blew in, and I thought it was strange since we did not have any windows in the basement. But nevertheless, I carried on. As I reached the bottom of the basement, the washing machine was still on. Mom had forgot to turn it off, I thought, so I turned it off. Now, I couldn't hear anything, so I thought that the noises was just the washing machine. But sudden, some big blue fuck charged towards me, and I like screamed like hell, and when it fell over me, I swear I was nearly shitting my pants. Then, it turns out to be my stupid brother, covered in a blue sheet. So later that day, I needed some new pants, and my brother got a trip to the hospital. Kind regards, Eric from Denmark. So he beat up his brother so badly that he had to go to hospital. <laughs> I mean, that's the horrible thing. Pants. That's the horrible thing about this story. Not the fact that, you know, his little brother was... He had a blue sheet over his head, and that scared him. I mean, what the fuck? That was a good story, man. I think that's a great story. It's a good story. Thank you, Eric. It's a terrible story. It's lame. You're lame, Eric. What a terrible story. Don't ever, ever email us again. <laughs> You're banned email from us emailing again. us. You're banned from Thank emailing you. us. Thank uh, you. I hate you, Eric. I hate you. I hope this I hope a real ghost attacks you and it looks like your brother with a blue sheet on his head. And you're like, oh, stop it, Gary, because that's his name. But it turns out that it's a ghost and he, like, rips your face off. Okay. Um, you cunt. This is a story which I'm sure I've heard before. Thanks for writing to us, Eric, by the way. Thanks. Um, I'm sure I've heard this this story before in some shape Go or on, form. Then. So it can't be... Okay. Th- I'm not sure this is... I've heard it before. Anyway. I have a pretty good story from a little while back. I was talking to a random girl on MSN for a few moments and began to flirt with her and to be honest I started saying some dirty things. It was all fun until I asked your asked her, hey, what's your ASL? She said, 15, F, Melbourne. I'm 18 and live in Melbourne by the way. I had a feeling I should stop but I kept flirting. I asked her if she had any siblings and she said she had a brother. Anyway, I kept talking and asking her things until I came to the conclusion that she was my sister. I walked into her room and asked her some question and then looked over at her shoulder and saw that she was talking to me on MSN. I immediately went back to my room, said I had to go, blocked her and never spoke with her again. It's a terrifying story. (laughs) There's variants of this story all over the place, isn't there? You know, like... Oh, this is like a standard like the, plot. For like a, the guy who everything. goes into a gent's toilets, uh, like the park, and there's a hole in the cubicle, and a dick pops through. Right. And yeah, the guy yeah. thinks, "Oh, what the hell?" And he he sucks the dick, and you know he swallows when the guy's done, and you know he leaves the toilet, and he bumps into his dad. <laughs> He's just leaving the toilet at like the same coming out time. Of the toilet. Yeah. Yeah, or something. Or no, no, he, I don't think they'd leave at the same time, would they? I think he wanted to like find out who it was, so he like hides in the bushes or something and watches who comes out of the toilet. And then his dad comes out and then the vicar comes out. <laughs> and then George Michaels comes out. <laughs> and Tom Cruise come no, Tom Cruise will never come out. Oh, awful. Awful. This is one of it's one of those oh, stories like from. I've got uh, to thank someone. Um, I've got to thank my someone, life, Lewis. You know? Jack from Oldham, thank you very much for your donations. Plural. He donated. I think he might have accidentally clicked the button six times because he, he donated six times. Holy thank crap! Thank you very much, Jack from Oldham. Thank you. Thanks for the cash. Um, I've got your phone number, which is a little bit creepy, but I won't call you. Don't worry. 
Or will I? Don't call him. That would be very weird. Um... Okay, we got a letter from one of our long-term listeners. Long, long-time long listeners. Long-term? That's like, like a mental illness. Oh. He's got chronic <laughs> listener. <laughs> He's called Ashley. He wants to know uh, if we pl- have any other consoles, such as Xbox or PS3. He has a PS3 and would love to play with us. He's also getting an Xbox for Christmas. Um... Also, something you could talk about in the Yog Pod is X Factor. Just a suggestion, since X Factor is shown worldwide in most countries, I think that your American fans would know what you're talking about. It could be funny, the things Honeydew comes up with about those damn annoying twins, John and Edward. Do you know oh, anything about God. X Factor at all, or do you have a, a console, Simon? I don't have a current gen console. I used to have an Xbox. I have one right now, still have it. I'm looking at it, it's covered in dust, it's huge, it's a huge grey monolith. Just sat there on the floor, glaring at me. It's on the floor? It's on the floor, <laughs> it's on old, dusty carpet that hasn't been hoovered in four years. What else is on your floor? It's got a dusty controller on it, and dusty games. Um, two television sets are on the floor. Right. Of my room, Do either Lewis. of them work? Uh, Kind of, yeah, kind of work. I've got some graphic novels. I've got a guide to Halo 2. I've got an old <laughs> yellowy keyboard. Um, I've got an office chair. I've got about 200 CDs strewn around. What kind of CDs? I've got an old, Game CDs I've got an old pair CDs. of corduroy trousers. <laughs> <laughs> that no longer fit you? Or... <laughs> Basically. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got a PS2. I've got a PS2 over there. I what forgot I had man? that. Um, it's a slimline one as well. Uh, ironically. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, the next question. X Factor. We haven't talked about X Factor. Oh, it was, it was just golly. one request. All right, X Factor. I don't really watch it. Hannah watches it, and she tells us about Hannah it. Hannah can talk she about loves it. it. Yeah. I thought you were going to say something else, though. I thought, Hannah can fuck right off. I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> Why would I say that? Um, I don't know. I, you, you and Hannah aren't getting on too well at the moment. I'm, it's all right. She tells us about X Factor, and I've seen in the papers about those two twins with their spiky blonde hair, and they can't sing. Have they you? can't sing. I haven't seen it. They but... can dance a little. Right. Okay. What is there to say about X Factor? It's it's kind of shit. Do you, I mean, Cruel, do you think it's horrible. X Factor has drained all of the talent that was available in the past few yeah, years? Yeah, but I mean, people don't watch it for that. Are we, is, people is, watch is, it for the Britain people who are terrible. Sucked dry of talent. People aren't interested in people succeeding <laughs> I mean, on the X Factor. They're only interested in people who fail in a abysmal. It's okay. okay. All right, well, that's that. Some fat builder in his 40s who's singing like Frank Sinatra. In conclusion, X Factor can suck my Disney. This guy Next. asked... His name's DJ Cinema. He says, I was listening to one of your... Yog- well, first he asked, when are we going to see Hannah's bikini pictures? Oh, Christ. Well, she said that she was working on it, and that was months ago. I think she was trying to Photoshop her face onto, like, Jessica Beale or someone. But she right, couldn't even okay. be asked to do that. So <laughs> the answer is probably next summer. Okay, okay. Or knowing the Yog Pod at completely at uh, the wrong time, i.e. in the mm. depths of winter. Yeah. Um, oh, we should say, um, people should vote for us on Podcast Alley or or and... Also, leave reviews and ratings on iTunes for us. Thank you. Also, okay. thank you to uh, Joris. That may not, may not be how you pronounce his name, but it's spelt Joris <laughs> from uh, right. Dutchland, who's donated to the Yog Pod. Okay. Thank you, Joris. Right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Stop with this. Um, uh, we, in one of the old episodes, we talked about you doing cross country, and you said that we'd save that for a later time. And we've never come back to it. So, uh, have you got anything to say about doing cross-country? <laughs> this guy's calling us on everything. 
like all of our little slip ups. <laughs> We said that we'd show Hannah with her tits out, and we didn't do it. Careful, and now he's calling Simon. us on it. Well, so you want me to talk about cross-country running? It was horrible. Um, really, the only good thing about it was seeing girls run around in tight clothing. That was the only thing I found interesting. The about only it. redeeming feature. Man, cross-country was hard. Yeah. We were forced to do it from a fairly young age at school. I don't know about you, but... You know, it seemed to like go on year after year. We were still doing it. Man, it was painful. We did it like in all weather, whether it was raining or snowing. Or have I told you that story? I have told you a story about when I did cross country in the snow. Yeah, it's on a podcast, Lou. It's on the fucking well, podcast. Well, if it's on the podcast, why are we in a previous why episode are we covering it again? Because, because yet again, you started talking about your exploits and. Like, my own stories just got left behind and forgotten oh, sorry, about. Sorry, we'll go... And you're doing it go again then, now. Simon. You have the open mic. Okay, well, there was this one time in which um, there was me, Kevin, and Neil. Um, hello, Kevin, Kendall, like and Neil Warren. Ready. You're out there. <laughs> um, we went for a run, and the three of us... The thing is, Neil was quite, quite muscular but small, and Kevin was quite skinny but lanky. And there's me, this kind of fat, weird little boy. We were quite an odd group, and we were. <laughs> what? So there's what? one, there's one tall, thin guy, one really like circular guy, and one small little Basically, musty guy. If you were look at so like get, fantasy archetypes, they get smaller archetypes, and wider as they go down. Fantasy archetypes: Neil Warren would be a hobbit, Kevin Kendall would be an elf, like Elrond. He looks a bit like Elrond, actually. That's uncanny. <laughs> And I would be Gimli. <laughs> <laughs> so, you got the three of us. Gimli. We're going on a little journey to uh, to take our legs to to Mount Lower Slaughter, as it was known as, not Mount Doom. So we're running to Lower Slaughter. Um, and it was an interesting run. It's basically in the middle of nowhere. There's no roads. Yeah. It's just across fields. Um and this was from Borton to Lower Slaughter. And these places, they're tiny little towns. Lower Slaughter is a tiny little village. And the only people we would see is other runners. That would be it. You wouldn't see any members of the public just, you know, walking their dog or anything. You'd see no one. No one yeah, at all. No, no dogs, no farmers brandishing shotguns. Although maybe they watched in horror. With their hands in their pockets, rummaging. Mmm. Okay. So the three of us, we go for our little run, um, and there was, we were basically trying to work out how we could cheat the system, how we could... Okay. Take a shortcut. Because <laughs> the teachers weren't there following you. All you had to do was basically be gone for the length of time that it would take you to run it. And we were trying to figure out, okay, say we don't want to run it, what are we going to do? Are we just going to sit on this, you know, bridle way where traditionally, you know, horses would come by? Are we just going to sit on this, like, muddy path and just wait half an hour and then walk back? And in the end, we just couldn't be bothered. We just couldn't, we couldn't come up with any cunning plan. There was no, you know, how about we go to the pub? Any cool ideas such as that? Or, hey, let's... Let's go and get off to some mischief. Let's go and steal some apples from Farmer Giles. None of this. We just thought, oh, we we may as well just do it. And that was the. This is the great anecdote of mine. So in the end, we just ran it because we couldn't think of any cunning plan of how to get out of it. Wow. So we just ran it anyway and got back, and we felt sheepish, even though we never did anything wrong. The thought was there. We were we were scheming. Well, that anecdote is... That's a terrible story. ...paralleling terrible. My, my skill of telling anecdotes. Some guy who's called the Gary Modder writes and says he liked the story and wondered if we were going to do any more. Um, he also he, says... What, he liked the story that I just told? No, the, sorry. <laughs> well, that's amazing. That's quick. That's quick feedback. <laughs> <laughs> the story from episode 13, the long story. Oh, right, you're uh, The Last Watch. Yeah. We haven't had 
Well, you haven't told me that we've had an awful lot of feedback about that. Um, um, we've had a bit. I guess been, because it wasn't funny. No, it's been funny, largely positive, but really. it wasn't funny. So people didn't really... Um, you know, people were expecting the usual drivel chat, and it wasn't the same. Anyway, he says, When I play Call of Duty 4 whilst listening to you guys, my score goes up from 25 kills, 40 deaths, to 76 kills, 48 deaths. There you go. Keep up the That's good That's a work. lesson for everyone. If you're doing badly on your uh, FPSs, doing it's PvP, if you're doing badly, all you got to do is listen to the Yogpod, and your score will almost double, or... or more than double. I can't remember the numbers, but it was close to doubling either way. Indeed. Um, we are enabling the pwn. That's how, how I like to see it. We are pwn enablers. We have to do it by proxy, because neither of us are very good at pwnage. But we can pass on this magical power, this, like, what do you call it? Mojo. This mojo of ours. Mm. We can pass on mm. to you, the listener. Mm. 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 Oh yeah, I do you know? Okay, this is something interesting. You know, there's a World of Warcraft dating website. It's called Datecraft. Oh my god! Have you heard of this? I do now. I signed you up for it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Put a picture of you on it. Yeah. Um, what? Yeah, yeah. You've actually put my picture on it. <laughs> yeah. I signed you up <laughs> what? and put your what picture on it. Uh, I've had a message already. It says, "Hello, dear." Nice to meet you. My name is Mary. I just went through your profile when I was searching for love. I have no options. Oh god, I can see it! It's on the front page! It's on the front fucking page! (laughs) Me with the (laughs) Dalek! Well, that's uh, that's probably just because I just logged in just now to check it. It's... I think... (laughs) Oh no! Oh god! Don't panic! (laughs) Don't panic! I, I saw your profile today. That is why I wish to have a relationship with you. I will also like to know you more. I will also send you my pictures. I believe we can move from here. Bear in mind that love has no colours barrier, no educational background barrier, no social economic barrier, religious what? language, nationality or distance barrier. The only important <laughs> thing there is, is love. I am waiting for what your mail fuck? at mary underscore simon for you at yahoo.com. Thanks for your cooperation. So, so her surname Mary. is my first name. Well, do you know what? I think it's like one of these Russian brides or something who are trying to like get you in to like send them money to come uh, to your country. Kind it was of a thing. bit of a weird message, you know. Love has no color barrier, or you know, it's like what? Sorry, what? Why are you saying that? It's not really something you say like on a first message. No, no. There it's like, oh, hello. Um, Love, love has no barriers. Uh, two people have actually commented on our profile as well. Oh, well your profile. <laughs> our profile. <laughs> Sorry. Two people have commented on your profile. One is a guy called Black Phoenix 505 who has a very sexy neck beard. And he wrote Exterminate. With oh, right, because there's a Dalek. And, uh, oh, I see marks. what you did there. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, there's a picture of you with a Dalek. And the other person is Jade... Um, Chantel from Yogs or whatever. Who? From our guild. Jade. Do you know who that is? I don't know quite who that is. I think she's got a mage. Um, oh! I think I know who it is, yeah. She's a terrible, terrible mage. But I think I know her, yeah. Uh, it's... I'll send you... Hang on, check my comment. You might not be able to see it because you're not logged in. No, I can't see it because I'm not logged in. <laughs> even though I have a fucking profile on there. Oh, them. What's the login for it? Hang on, let me see if I can get the picture. <laughs> Am I not allowed to log in? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are, but because I what accidentally the set the password to the one which I use for fucking everything. All right, hang on, let me tell you it. That's your password for everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Just don't log into anything, all right? Damn it. Everyone has, like... The thing is, everyone has a really dumb password that they've used for years, and... They've just, like, added to it over the years. Like, they've put a capital letter in the front, or they've added, like, an extra number on the end, or an extra S on the end, or something. Oh, my God. Jade Chantel. She looks very emo. Very emo. Look at her Look at her appearance. It says, body type, voluptuous. Now, who puts that on a dating site? People who are honest. 
Lewis, people who are honest. No, but you know what I mean? On a dating site, you have to, like, <laughs> put everyone puts one below what they are. Oh, God. So we got her. And how does the scale work? How does the scale work using, like, like the fatness scale? I mean, it goes from, like... <laughs> I'd imagine it doesn't have obese as an option. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it goes, like, chubby, cuddly, voluptuous, uh, bouncy... Bubbly's in there oh, somewhere. God. Okay, look at this. Look at Jade Chantal, right? Look down on her page, and there's kitten underscore. Is that a man or a um, woman? It looks like Gok Wan, doesn't it? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so it's rather difficult to tell, I suppose. I guess it does. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh, it is a woman. It says it says gender woman. Wow, it could. It, I thought it was a man. Oh dear, oh dear. Actually. Oh, there we are. So hopefully you'll be it's able to find recently. love through that. Um, that's oh, that God. site, and uh, I can't. That'll be great. Oh God! A picture of me with a Dalek giving a thumbs up. What a catch! What a catch! Um, someone sent us an email. This guy called Timothy Jester. That's a good name, Timothy Jester. Apparently, that's his full name. Mm. Really? He said I posted an iTunes review. But they w- they rejected it, so he's sent it to us instead. It says, "This podcast is absolutely fucking brilliant." Well, I mean, I think I think the problem was with that word there. You know, maybe if he hadn't used that word, it probably would have been all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then again, he so it carries up. on. Stumbled across them a few months ago on YouTube, and I've been hooked ever since. Maybe it's a soft spot for late twenties, early thirties British men that have my male heterosexual heart pounding and my average-sized cock hard. What? But whatever it is, keep it up and subscribe to this nonsense. What? (laughs) I'm sorry? What? 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 No, no, go back, go back, go back. What? a soft spot for for your accents. Your accents. The Queen and such, you know. Um, This podcast has more balls than the former McDonald's play pit... Jesus. My uncle climbed into with me all those years ago, before they were removed. The pit went to the trash, and my uncle went to prison. It's a good review. It's a good review. Thanks. I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, it's a perfect review. But, um, well. <laughs> thanks to that, Tim. Um, okay. This one's from Dave. Dave O. David O. This is a like Halloween story, apparently. You ready? Cue music. Oh. It was a late Tuesday night, and I stumbled into my room and turned on the light. I had been listening to my iPod, so I pulled the headphone out of my ears and threw them on the floor. I then hopped into bed, watched TV for around an hour, then turned off the light and went to bed. I woke up the next morning, there was a thick fog outside, and it was freezing cold inside my room. For some reason, my window was ajar. I stood up, naked, in the middle of my room, and looked down. I saw my iPod headphone wire poking out from under the bed, so I picked it up. It was at this moment I discovered the headphones were missing. All that remained was the jack and some bare wires. Is that it? Yeah. So... Wow. So his brother nicks his headphones. Is that the story? We don't know whether his brother was involved, but um, possibly. Brilliant. Brilliant story. (laughs) I assume someone crept in in the night and stole his headphones. But it could have been a ghost. Um, Maybe it's our first dead Yogpod listener. You know? What do you mean? A ghostly Yogpod listener. If he was listening to his uh, iPod with the headphones on, maybe the headphones turned into ghostly headphones so he could hear. And that's why they disappeared. Ah. But. Don't argue. Do I don't it. get it. Alright, alright. <laughs> don't argue. Just accept it. <laughs> Just accept it, okay? Alright. Um, 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 so there we are. That's all the. If you're a that's, ghost, that's all the emails and stuff. Um, you can contact us by floating over our heads as we sleep and gently caressing our face. Ooh, 
you're listening to the Halloween Yoke Pod Spooktacular. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know what that is. It's like a ghost, it's a good. vampire, <laughs> just everything. It's all a mixed vampire up. ghost. Ooh. There's a long email from someone called Caroline May. No, oh, okay. Who's a fan of the Yog Pod? Oh, a girl. It's a oh. bit long. Is she the crazy Spanish one? No, 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 no. The no. Portuguese one. <laughs> oh, Portuguese. Okay, okay. Sorry if you're listening, crazy Portuguese lady. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> um. Most of it is like things like just useless stuff that people put in emails for no reason. Like, hello, I was going to attempt to type an email that did not put me across as some mental Yogpod fan, but then I thought the mere fact that I was writing an email seemed to imply that. It's true. It's a good point. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That sort of sets the scene for the rest of the rambling, it's good. insane email. It's a good email. Just about. It's kind of like the emails how... that I. I send to um, like Richard Herring or Mike David. It's kind of like, "Hello, I am not crazy." You know, you have to, you have to say that when you talk to somebody that you you know you've never talked to before, but you hear them over the internet. Uh, I think she posted some like comments and stuff on our videos and YouTube pages, and as a result, one of our even stranger listeners has subscribed to her channel. Oh right, she's got a channel. Is she pretty? Uh, well, I don't. I don't know. I don't know whether she probably is, but I don't know whether she's like. What? What are you talking about? Let's check. I don't. I, I don't know which one it is. Which who it is? Anyway, let's not go there. It's not just. This is. This is what. I just want to know if she's pretty. That's all. Maybe she. Maybe she can contact you on Datecraft, Simon. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Or she could float over my head as I sleep, gently caress my face. <laughs> Um, <laughs> gently caress your face. So, so what does she? What does she have to say? Oh, just, just. I'm not crazy. She said, um, some her head teacher had told the school that Billy Piper was going to come and do her A levels at the school, but she never actually did. <gasps> oh no! Which is a real heartbreaker, isn't it? Um, I went to school with um with Neil Warren. Nah, that's all right. Who's that? Is that the Hobbit? He's not yeah. famous. He's just a friend. I don't talk to him anymore. Um, I don't think I've talked to him since since we were eighteen. Okay, what? Uh, so you've, just, what are you talking 13 about? Thirteen years ago. So you uh, went to school with this guy, but you've not spoken to him, and he's not famous. Oh, just name dropping. <laughs> I'm just name dropping someone who isn't famous. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. And um, Susan Beecham. I went to school with as well. It's famous. Is she heir to the Beecham's cough remedy fortune? No, no. This is the uh, the Beecham's from Bledington. They're not. Oh, the really Bledington famous. Beecham's. Oh yes, of course. Is there any more like Halloweeny sort of stuff we could possibly? This is such a rambling podcast. It's just bouncing back and forth between. Well, like everyone that we've done. No, most of them have some degree of structure. We aren't just like half an hour of us bouncing back between trying to. Think about Halloween and well, they, they kind of are though, aren't they? They kind of are. I went to a wedding. Did I tell you about the wedding that I went to? Yeah, you caught swine flu. I, d- I thought I caught swine flu, but I didn't actually. One of my friends had swine flu and was sneezing everywhere. No. And I, I was feeling really bad for like a day, and I thought I might, might have caught it, but in fact, I'm feeling a lot better. Um, so you're not dying at all. I mean, that wasn't really the the main thing about the that wedding. That's a close call. Phew. So. If you, we should, we should, this is going off on a tangent again. If you were a ghost, what kind of ghost would you be? Uh, well, that's a difficult one. You, you mean, if I, I'd be like a vengeful ghost. Like, I'd, like, kill people. I'd like, what? I'd like murder people that I didn't like when I was alive, who'd wronged me. So what happened? You've been wronged? Oh, God. I wouldn't like be a nice ghost. I wouldn't like be Casper. I wouldn't be like I'd be a, a. I mean, if I had to be brought back from the dead, there would be a damn good reason for it, you know. Like I was killed, or I'd go around righting the wrongs and stuff. I'd be like a lone ranger. You'd be style ghost. You'd be the ghost of the lone ranger. Only you'd like kill all of your friends. <laughs> yeah. Because you're like 
psychotic and you think you've been wrong. I wouldn't kill all my friends, dude. I'd only kill like bad people. I'm like a vigilante ghost. That's all. Are you are you expecting to be murdered? Well, no. I mean, you're <laughs> suggesting. <laughs> Are you expecting to be murdered? Because that's kind of what it sounds Wait, like. What? So what's, you have to elaborate on the story unless you want me to just tell you the circumstances. Okay. Um, so let's just say that you get murdered by someone. Someone you know kills you. And they get away with it. They get away with it. Okay? It, they make it look like um, an accident. So a chandelier falls on your head or something, but it, it turns out that he was undoing the screws, he or she was undoing the screws, and so it fell on you. Right, yeah, okay. Um, and you come back from the dead as a spirit, and you're angry, you're vengeful, so how are you going to go about getting your revenge and righting the wrongs? Well, it depends how much power I have as a ghost, because, um, so what kind of powers do I have? What kind of powers are feasible that you would like? As a ghost, well, that would help you in your quest. I mean, for example, am I stuck to a certain location, like the the, the immediate area to where I died? Do I have to walk everywhere? Um, can I like fly? Can I? I mean, obviously, I can go through walls, and no one can see me uh, unless I like put a sh- no. Hang on, I can't put a sheet on. Psychic people would be able to see you. Right, so nutters so... would be able to see me. That's good. Yeah, and you could talk to them, and you could pass on messages. That no one would believe. So... Okay. Um. Kind of think ghost. You're Patrick Swayze, and you find a crazy person who is um, Whoopi Goldberg. I've not seen Ghost. What if I'm your Whoopi Goldberg? I've not... Uh, so what happens in the film Ghost? I mean, I this is a really difficult question. Couldn't couldn't I just, like... Why are we, why are we choosing ghosts? Say... Okay... You're a ghost. This is like the most I'm a psychic. ridiculous role play ever. You're a ghost because it's Halloween. You're a ghost. I'm a psychic. And you want to pass on a message. What message would you like to pass on that I could tell people? The thing is, though, whatever you said, they wouldn't believe. They just think you were a complete nutbag. No one would believe it. People who are in mourning, some sort of, um... who are very emotionally fragile, will believe these kind of things. They won't. They won't. My mum is they like do, a scientist. My You've dad's seen you know, cold readings and, and, and things. A, he's got a degree in science. I mean, my parents don't believe in this stuff. They won't believe you if you tell whatever you say. What they if you won't pass on a message? You say there was a that message from the dead. It's something that only you only they and your parents known. know. Yeah, they still wouldn't believe you. I mean, it would have to be really damn good. Well, so how would I know? Okay, well, what would it be then? What would that message be? Some, like, deep, dark secret. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be a deep, dark secret. It could just be, oh, and don't put too much cinnamon in your banana bread. Ooh. Remember that time on South End Beach when a jellyfish bit me? Stung Lewis's willy. <laughs> and his mother... His mother had to piss over his coin. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think that's an urban legend as well. <laughs> Propagated no, by friends. No, it's true. It's the acid. It's the acid that's in urine. It helps to, to soothe the pain. It's the dumbest thing ever. So, I would do it to you. If you were stung, I would I'd just whip it out in a second. And just start... I would be drinking as I was urinating so I could keep going. <laughs> I'd just have, like, this big jug. And I'd be just like... Oh, you are disgusting. <laughs> Oh, poor Lewis, you've been stung on the face. Never mind, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll sort this out. <laughs> what the fuck, Simon? <laughs> For God's sake. Oh, God. Such a convoluted, like, messed up story. It's just not going to happen, is it? Ghosts. Oh, I, I mean, we've talked about this before, but I'm, like, totally sick of the stereotypical supernatural shit that people will just accept as real. You know, like... You vampires know. are real, Lewis. <sighs> vampires. God. And werewolves and... I knew a girl who was a vampire. Did you? Yes. She wore black and she would bite me. That's a vampire. That's all it is. That's a vampire. They wear black and they bite people. That's what well, they the, do. The, the, the whole undead thing is usually a pretty crucial part of it. And the fangs and the... Uh... No, it's a virus. Vampirism is a virus, Lewis. It's not that they're, they're not dead. It's a virus, and also 
they're not allergic to garlic and crosses don't work on them but they can't walk over running water which is a bit of an awkward thing to have because it means that they can't cross any bridges it's quite terrible if you're driving and you've got GPS if you're a vampire you've got to have special vampire GPS sat nav vamp nav so it redirects you around rivers but I think that would be a real problem in reality because there would be a whole lot of places that, that vampires can't go because rivers pretty much cover everywhere. And how do you define a river? I mean, there's like underground like water supplies all constantly everywhere. And I mean, every town is built on a river. They'd be like completely screwed all the time. They'd why... never be able to go anywhere. A lot of vampires live in the desert. That's why you don't see them because they've got to be away from the running water. What? I mean, some of these... That's why you don't see them. Also, the moon. They're on the moon because there's no running water. There's frozen water. Well, there might not be. But there's no running water. <laughs> so you have lots of vampires on the moon wearing, like, helmets. Well, you just helmets. threw that in. There might not be. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> well, there might no, not be vampires. There's no scientific consensus either. whether there's water on the well, moon. Well, there's definitely no running well, actually, water. Actually, it's, it's highly likely that there is water on the moon. Um... There's no garlic... Either. Yarkpard. I am a robot ghost. Woo! Woo! I am a robot ghost. Woo! You are listening to Yarkpard. Woo! That's terrible. That's <laughs> terrible. Um, <laughs> do you know what my mother said to me the other day? No. My mother said... I've come up with the perfect murder. And I was like, I'm sorry? She says, yeah, I've, I've been thinking about it, and I've come up with the perfect murder. Right, okay. So she's what been I'm watching a lot do, of CSI, she's been watching a lot of more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a leg of lamb, a frozen, a frozen leg of lamb, and I'm going to hit your father over the head with it, and then we'll cook the lamb for dinner. Okay, I think that's been done before, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I said, I'm no, sure that's like, that's like an Agatha Christie. That was it. And she was like, oh yeah, probably. But that's how I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. So, okay, so what's she going to do with the body? Well, she'll say like a burglar came in or something, I guess. And they'll go, oh, but what about the murder weapon? And she'll go, oh, um, I don't know about any murder weapon. Do you fancy some lamb stew, officer? <laughs> it smells good. Um, and he'll go, oh, thank you. It's lovely. And she'll have this big smirk on her face as he eats it. Uh, the thing is, that's fine, isn't it? You know, if you want to kill your direct spouse. Your direct spouse. Not to be confused with an indirect spouse. But what if you wanted to kill someone else? Okay. I mean, the thing about your spouse is that they live in the house with you. Uh, you're going to be under suspicion, aren't you, from the start? And, and okay. you, you want to have so, to kill them in the first place. What if you wanted to kill someone who you hate, who's wronged Gordon you? Gordon Brown. Example? Say you want to kill Gordon Brown, assassinate okay. him. Right, let's what you do okay. is you're at a political rally or something, and he's there, he's giving a talk or whatever. What you do is you creep up behind him with a frozen leg of lamb. <laughs> <laughs> you whack him on the back <laughs> of the head. You run off, and then you roast the lamb. And then you serve it to all the secret servants. Right. I, I that mean, come and say, I... excuse me, I'm pretty sure I just saw you kill the Prime Minister. And you say, no, it wasn't me, officer. Would you like some stew? Okay, killing the Prime Minister is something that's, that we shouldn't really talk about because it's terrible, it's terrible, it's terrible treason. Um, but also, I mean... We'll be arrested. He would be a very... I'm mean, talking about, like, Dexter level of killing, you know? Dexter obviously plans, like, murders and gets away with them... But he plans, he goes to the butchers <laughs> early in the morning, <laughs> buys that leg of lamb, no, but, uh, takes it home, I mean, puts it in the freezer. We're talking about murder here. Uh, I, think, I think I read something about like the perfect murder and stuff on, on SA at some point, and it was pretty much that the problem is, is both not being the last person seen with them and disposing of the body so that there's almost nothing that remains so there's no evidence that they've even been killed um and dexter does that by he did that by like throwing bin bags with their corpses in into like the the, the ocean and like and then they down. were all found but they eventually found all yeah. those <laughs> so that didn't work out yeah. too well did it but his idea was to throw them down like a deep ocean ridge you know but that's a bit difficult to hit you know so he ended up with quite a lot of them just sort of being on the edge 
But also, the other if you're way... a vampire, you probably couldn't do that to your victims. You couldn't throw them in the water because it's all running water. The other way, of... unless I mean, I guess they're strong vampires, so they could probably throw the body quite a distance. What are you talking about? Where are vampires come into it again? Why are we talking about vampires again? Because it's Halloween. We have to talk about vampires. So you've got a vampire serial killer. Talking about murder. He's got his... That's quite a scary subject. He's a subject. vampire serial killer. He's killed his latest victim and to dispose of the body he wants to throw it into the sea. But the sea is running water so he can't, you know, get on a boat because that's not allowed. Because otherwise he... I don't know what happens to him. I mean, how does running water work? I don't know work? how that works. He gets seasick. <laughs> he gets seasick. That's what it means. I mean, if you flush if you flush the loo, for example, if you flush the um, loo and you're standing near it... Well, so long as you're not sitting on it as you flush, I think it's fine. So if a vampire flushes the toilet when he's sitting on it, he'll just, like, go poof. Who sits on the... Who flushes the loo as they're sitting on it? You get, like, water splashing up on your ass. Nobody would do that. That's ridiculous. Some people might like that. Oh. It's, like they, it's also a, a B-day as well as a toilet. Oh. It doubles up, yeah. Nothing, nothing, that's, that's far less disgusting than some of the things you've said today. I so, um, about, what the hell? Yeah, so the the perfect murder. Because there was, remember, there was um, that guy who got rid of his victims by dissolving them in acid, didn't he? Yeah. Or something. And he got found out because their teeth didn't dissolve and they were like, when he poured them down the drain, the teeth were like left on the drain. Coat I think cover. Jeffrey Dahmer did that. Um... I'm not sure whether that's true or not. not. Sure. I mean, I think it'd be quite difficult to get hold of the acid, you know, these days. Where do you buy it from? You can't really, like, buy it very easily or make it. Boots. Get a boots. <laughs> Hello, I'd like a vat of acid, please. Do you reckon they deliver it to your house like a sofa? You know, you have to oh, sign for it. It's, it's buy three oh, for the price of two on, on vats <laughs> of acid. <laughs> but, I mean, the thing is, if you were doing it like that, Oh, it's difficult. I think if you want to just murder one person or something who's really been getting on your nerves, then it's probably easier than if you were like a serial killer, you know. I think if you're going to... What, what's our general advice here on murder? We're not going to give any general advice. <laughs> don't commit murder, for God's sake. Um, don't kill anyone. Don't Certainly don't, don't kill, kill the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister. Cause if you kill the Prime Minister and then you say, the Yogpod, I was listening to them, and they said... Kill the Prime Minister with a leg of don't, lamb. So don't get into do that. trouble for don't that. Don't throw any lamb-based products I mean, at the Prime Minister. If you do kill the don't Prime Minister with a leg of lamb, if you do it, though, if you do it, don't mention us. What? Keep us out of it, what? okay? <laughs> just don't mention the Ogpod. Okay, okay. Just It'll be our little secret. Um, Our little secret. We here in Britain have a very similar, well, not a very similar thing, but another festival very shortly after Halloween, which is often sort of overshadowed by Halloween because it's so early. It's November the 5th, Guy Fawkes Night, Fireworks Night. And, you know, we make a much bigger, we used to make a much bigger deal of that in Britain than Halloween. But because it comes so quickly after Halloween, it kind of gets forgotten, doesn't it? Yeah. I, in fact, I forgot. Even though... The, there's the little rhyme, remember, remember, the 5th of November. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that... Gunpowder, treason and I plot. I forgot it was coming How does out? that go? That's it, that's the whole rhyme. Oh. But... I don't know if there's anything happening, because I'm supposed to write about events, and I, I've completely forgot that the 5th of November was coming up. So where does... God damn. Where does Where does that all come from? I mean, where does Halloween come from? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we know... That uh, Americans won't, but we celebrate Guy Fawkes Night because it was the night that which uh, some people tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament and they got found out. And if they had succeeded, it would have like, you know, blown them to the ground or something. And it's all it's all a bit sort of. We can read it on Wikipedia. It's quite an interesting little tale of ancient Britain. Yes, it's um Halloween is from like oh I can't remember. I don't know how it's pronounced, but it's Samhain. Um, it's Irish, so it's not going to be anywhere nearly pronounced like that. It's the end of summer, and I think they used to have bonfires and stuff to, like, chase away the darkness and to, like, celebrate the end of the summer. Uh, I mean, Halloween is, like, All Hallows' Day. It's the, the day before 
All Hallows Day. It's All Hallows Eve, sorry. And Hallows Day is the day of the the Saints, which is November the 1st. It's weird because you have like a really ancient festival and then it's just picked up by people as time goes by. So it's connected to, you know, the Saints quite recently, even though the original festival's got nothing to do with the Saints. Well, that's what happened with Christmas, though, isn't it? Because Christmas originally used to be like the celebration day of Mithras, which was like the religion that was going around before Christianity. But because everyone was celebrating on that day, it gradually got, you know, accepted and, and like adopted by Christmas as like Jesus's birthday and stuff. On whatever it is. I mean, I guess um, Thanksgiving is like the next thing coming up, which we don't even fucking celebrate. We've got nothing to, th- we've got nothing to be thankful for. Oh God, so, yes, I don't, I'm not even sure what that's for. Isn't that something to do with the Pilgrim Fathers or something? Yeah, who were like the first people that arrived in America. Yeah, or something. I think they were going to be killed or something by the Indians, and the Indians kind of let them go. And because of that, they, you know, that's what they're giving thanks for. I don't think that's right at all. Like <laughs> I think that's I think totally that's wrong. That's totally wrong. I think it was originally some religious festival for them. It was like, because um, they were like a specific, I mean, they, they originally came to America to escape religious persecution from Britain, didn't they? They had like, they're, they're, they believed like weird stuff. And mm. uh, I think it was some sort of sacred day to them, which is, I don't know, it's, it's some strange, something strange. Maybe we should research this before we talk about it for the next yeah. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone can let us know. Some American can tell us why you like Halloween and stuff. And we should just talk about the British one, man. We should talk about. This should be like a fireworks night special, not a Halloween special. Oh, it's too late now. It's too late. We've already done like four Halloween specials. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> In one year. <laughs> and we've totally forgotten the British one. Like, yeah. Damn it. Fuck. Do you? Know what I mean, we should talk about fireworks night. I mean, have you got any good memories of that? Um. Not really, no. I remember one boring, time, really, isn't it? fireworks. No, fireworks night's great. I've got a good friend oh, called Dave, who is like a um, bit of a wild, wild boy. Dave. And um, he's the guy who tasered you, isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, he's a really, really nice guy. And one, I think this was he was this was when we were about fifteen or sixteen. You know, quite kind of wild and stuff. And we went round his, his house and fireworks stuff because I think his parents had gone to like a bigger thing. And Dave had managed to get hold of a whole bunch of like proper display fireworks, okay? Because he was a bit of a, a nutter. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and basically what we did was one of them was like a, a sort of 4,000 gun barrage, okay? And it looks like, imagine a wheel of cheese, okay? But about three or four foot across, okay, and about a foot deep, okay? So what it looks like is, imagine a whole 4,000 tubes, like, in, all next to each other, all, all, like, wrapped together in a big wheel, okay? So we basically just clamped this thing into his workbench, his dad's workbench in the garden, and we all stood at max, max range, which was about, 10 yards, okay, because the garden was pretty fucking small. So it was like, oh my god, me, Michael Chapman, uh, Dave, um, and a couple of Dave's friends like Graham and some other guy, and we sort of just clamped this display firework in the garden, lit it, and it just went absolutely mental. It went mental. I mean, the workbench was like flying up off the floor. There were fireworks being fired out in all directions. We just all legged it into the house. It almost set like a tree on fire. It was a disaster. It was an absolute... It was so scary. It was just like a bomb was going off in our garden. It lasted about five minutes. He could have died. It was terrifying. And the thing is, he didn't just have that. He had tons and tons more. And, you know, after the initial shock of that had worn off, you know, we set up the rest of them, which were these... Some of them were crazy rockets, and some of them were like, you know, things that just exploded. And after we finished them all, um, Dave wanted to get rid of all the evidence, so like his, you know, his dad wouldn't find out that he bought all these fireworks. So the plan was to burn them all, 
okay, on a bonfire. Threw them in a sea. But unfortunately, Dave is a vampire. <laughs> Put them in a pack. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we got like a metal, one of those metal bins, you know, like um, like a metal grated bin. And we put all the fireworks in and we lit them and we were all sort of... So we put them all in and we, we lit them and it was all fine, right? It was fine and we mm-hmm. thought, right, this, 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 this is all getting rid of... And it was quite cold. So we were all kind of fairly close to this... You were huddling r- around. Roaring bonfire bin, oh, right? Oh, God. And <laughs> occasionally a, a loose firework would fire out of the bin, okay? <laughs> From one of the ones that hadn't gone off. And it would just scare the living shit out of us. Um, oh man, those were good times. We were we were very drunk as well. Like, shouldn't really have been. Could have worked that out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> good times. Good times. That was a really good fight. I mean, that's that's one that stands out in my memory because a lot of the time. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the instructions on fireworks say, you know, light the blue touch paper and, res- you know, return to a safe distance. Not. Throw them all into an aluminium bin and set fire to them en masse. And then stand around it as you're like mashed off your face. It's like do not return to a lit firework. There's all these rules. In, in retrospect, it was very dangerous um, and foolhardy. And I would recommend no one did such a thing ever again. I wish I was exaggerating that story as well. It was, it was really mental. You really could have all died if it just blew up. Have a firework in your face. I mean, that the workbench was like totally Jesus. destroyed as well. I mean, I, I've not really played around with fireworks. I usually just have a sparkler, just a little sparkler, <laughs> and I have to wear a glove to hold that. So I'm careful. <laughs> That's it. And I usually have like a toffee apple or something in the other hand. So I've got a toffee apple and a sparkler. I've got my mittens on. This is me at 31, not me as like 12. You're in heaven. I mean, that's that's all you need, isn't it? <laughs> so there we are. That's oh, the end okay. of this your pod. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please email us at yogscast at gmail dot com. Uh, Lewis reads every email, don't you, Lewis? Mm-hmm. Tell your friends about us. Otherwise, um, we'll curse you, and your willy will turn black and fall off. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Take care now. Don't have nightmares. (laughs) Now that's a good ending.